Alright guys, welcome back to Sona Scotland TV and for the first time in a long time, potentially even the first time ever, honestly cannot remember, but we're going to be doing a movie review on this channel and I um, honestly just picked a, a random movie, I thought you know what, I've got Now TV, I'm paying what, 11 99 a month for this shit. I never watch it, well guess what, we're going to start watching it and we're going to start having some movie reviews on the channel, so at, at total random, I seen that they had Alien the director's cut and I guess I, I listened to an audio Alien book like not so long ago and I thought you know what, we'll give this a chance, they appear to have all the Alien movies on it so Perhaps I will watch the rest of them too, but for now, I decided, well, we're going to go with Alien, the director's cut. Now, I did see the original Alien once, and I don't know if there's a massive difference between that and the director's cut, but I thought, you know what, we will give this one a chance, this movie, highly rated by um, pretty much, I think, everybody, especially in the, the horror genre, but um, I myself might have a slightly different view of it, so... So we start off the movie inside the spaceship known as the Nostromo. Now in case you didn't know, this movie is actually in space. Who would have thought that? A spaceship in space. Wow. Blowing my mind here. But anyway, the spaceship is returning to Earth with seven crew members on board. Uh, you've got Captain Dallas, Executive Officer Kane, Warrant Officer Ripley, Navigator Lambert, Science Officer Ash, and two engineers, Parker and... Brett. Now, on their way back to Earth, they detect a transmission. Well, the, the ship's mother computer detects a transmission and it awakens the crew due to the policy that if they have it, they, if they come across anything like that, it could be like a, a distress signal and it needs to be investigated. One of the engineers, Parker, isn't too pleased about this. He just wants to get back to Earth, but they end up going, Dallas is the the captain and he decides that they have to go and check it out. So, I think Dallas, Executive Officer Kane and Navigator Lambert all abort the uh, ship, spaceship at this time and they land on the moon to obviously investigate what the signal is. And it is uh, Officer Kane that comes across the alien eggs and the next thing he knows he, he kind of falls into one, looks in and this face grabber jumps out and latches onto his face. Now he was wearing they're all obviously they're in on the moon, they're wearing like protective gear. But it actually shattered the glass. Now I didn't think that would happen, but hey, it did. So he is rescued by Dallas and Lambert and then they try to get back on the ship, but Ripley isn't for it. She's refusing to let them on board, citing quarantine regulations. Dallas, he obviously is a commanding officer, he is saying that he overrules him, but uh, Ripley says that when she's when he's off the, the ship, she's in charge, she doesn't let him back on, and that is when Officer Ash decides to take it upon himself, letting him back in, and it's obviously at this stage they're not very happy with uh, Riley, Lambert, I think, slaps Riley, and they'll be a bit of a fight, but anyway, on, back on the uh, spaceship, they're obviously trying to save... Uh, they're trying to save Kane. He's got this face hugger like wrapped around his face, and every time they try to remove it, 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 it like it tightens its grip. It's got like a tail, and it keeps tightening its grip around his neck. Pretty uh, pretty cool scene, I guess. They try and cut it off, and then they they realize at this stage it leaks acid, so that is a no go. And then they like run some tests on him, and they're, they're contemplating freezing it, but they leave it for now. Uh, and then I believe it is um, Officer Ash who later on in the movie alerts them to come and check on Kane and it appears that Kane is fine. The face hugger for some reason has just left him. It's, it's jumped off his face. It's went to hug someone else and he appears to be okay. But later on when they're chowing down on their lunch, the, uh, the alien inside that was impregnated inside of Kane decides to chew down on him and it bursts through his stomach there as they're trying to hold him down. He starts panicking, starts struggling, the rest of the crew don't really know what's happening in the next minute. The the alien pops out of his chest and, and makes a run for it. Now keep in mind this alien isn't very big at all, it's about the size of a foot, so you wouldn't think it's going to cause many problems. So Dallas tells the team orders the team that they need to find it. While they're finding it, one of the engineers, Brett, loses the cat. There's a cat on board called Jones. He loses that and has to go and try and find it. He does find the cat, but the cat appears to be cowering away from him, hissing at him. And then he, he finds, like, shredded skin. 
on the floor so obviously you're drawing conclusions here that the alien is like a shred of its skin and it's maybe grew a wee bit bigger no it's not grew a wee bit bigger it's grew like humongous how the hell is this even possible it's went from like being the size of maybe slightly bigger than a human foot to about one and a half size the times of a human uh it grabs brett and basically kills him instantly the it's like it's like two heads, it's like a wee mini head inside of one that just launches out his mouth and impales you. Uh, it's pretty cool, and uh, he is is dead before anyone can come and save him. So the, obviously now they need to try and flush the, uh, the flush the alien out. According to Dallas, he's chasing it down with a flamethrower. He's in like the shafts trying to find it, but they're they're trying to track it down. They've got like a sensor thing. The alien is appearing on the sensor, but he cannot see it. It's supposed to be right in front of him, closing in on him. He's moving up and down the shaft with his flamethrower, but he, he moves down a shaft into the path of the alien. It's kind of like, I don't know, waiting on him or hiding, ready to ambush him, and it gets him. The crew go to check on the Captain Dallas, but they don't find the body. They don't find any blood. They don't find nothing. They just, just this flamethrower that was left there. So that means now there's only four members left. Uh... You've got Ripley, Lambert, Parker, and Ash. And it's at this stage we find out that Ash isn't actually a human. He's like an android, a computer. And his whole mission is to get the alien back to to Earth. And the crew is expendable. Uh, he starts attacking Ripley. Looks like he's about to kill her. And this is when the other two members come in. Parker and Lambert. And Parker ends up battering uh, the android uh, and Ash gets his head taken off, so the computer dies, they end up putting him on fire with the flamethrower, and then we're down to three members. So now uh, Lambert wants to try and evacuate the the ship, but Ripley says that obviously the shuttle or whatever cannot hold, it can only hold one person, or it can't hold at least three anyway, so they have to try and go on with... Um, with Dallas' plan to kill the alien, uh, while Parker and Lambert are, I guess, in searching for it together, they come across it. Uh, Parker is about to hit it with a flamethrower, but Lambert is just standing there, uh, not moving. He keeps yelling at her to move, move. She just stands there like an absolute fucking idiot. So he can't really use the flamethrower because she's in the way. So instead he thinks, I'm not going to use the flamethrower. I'm going to fucking charge at this big massive alien that can kill me instantly. Why he thought that was a good idea, I don't know. Anyway, tail whips him, kind of knocks him out, then lifts him up. And he basically gets the whole tongue impaled thing. I mean, I mean, it's a bit deep that. I mean, you'd probably save that for Valentine's Day. But no, the alien's giving it <laughs> two for one specials here. And then it gets... Uh, it gets navigator lambert and it kills her as well off screen i believe or it doesn't kill her it takes her it just she takes her away that now it's ripley on her own chasing down this alien she gets into its like lair and then she finds that it's still kept lambert and surprisingly captain dallas alive but it looks like they've been impregnated again so i think they're like infected with many aliens inside them Dallas it just about manages to tell Ripley to kill him, and then she sets him on fire with the flamethrower. Uh, then she sets the, the ship to self-destruct and manages to get her way to the 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 shuttle and launches that into the into space basically. So she thinks she's escaped the alien, and it turns out the alien is also in the shuttle with her. So it's just her, the cat, and the alien. Then she gets her suit on, like the space suit again. Alien comes towards her, goes to obviously try and kill her, and she manages to like open the door hatch and sends the alien out into space. And that is how the movie ends. And then it is she and Jones go back in the um the wee what do you call it like the the hot the hot thing to to sleep to, until she gets back to until she gets back to Earth or whatever and she fires up the engine and yeah she puts us what is it called into the stasis for the trip back to Earth and then that's the movie ends and the, the cast uh, credits start playing now this movie did have several people nominated for awards uh, Sigourney Weaver who played Ripley was nominated for Saturn Award for Best Actress and BAFTA Award for Most Promising Newcomer to Lead Film Role. Veronica Cartwright, who played Lambert, 
won a Saturn Award for Best Supporting Actress in the film. And John Hart, who played uh, Kane, Executive Officer Kane, his performance earned him a nomination for BAFTA Award for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. Now, I've got to say here, I, I don't really understand this. I really fucking don't. Um, especially this John Hurt guy who played Kane. He wasn't in the movie very long. He's the first one to die. I, I don't really know how he got nominated for Best Supporting Actor when he did not have a lot of screen time. And Veronica Cartwright, who played Lambert, was probably the least likeable character in the movie. She just wasn't... She wasn't a good character, wasn't likeable, and she is to blame for... Um, she's to blame for Parker getting killed in the end because he he had the he had the alien in his sights with the flame floor, but she wouldn't move. So I don't know. Was it a lot easier to to get awards back then, or perhaps they didn't give awards based out on the actual performances? It was just kind of if you're a if you're a known actor, you get an award that you get nominated. I don't know what happened, but fuck knows how those three um got awards for this movie. I can understand maybe. Sigourney Weaver, because she played Ripley, the main character, but, I mean, for, for that Veronica Cartwright to actually win Best Supporting Actress for such a shitty character, I don't really understand that. Now, this rate, I think this movie was rated, if you look at any sort of ratings, it's normally five stars, people say it's a classic, a 10 out of 10. Personally, for me, I don't think it was that good. I guess for its time, 1979, it was alright, but it's not, it's not, it's not the greatest movie ever. I didn't find that interesting. Boring in parts, I'm going to be honest. I mean, the crew kind of just gets wiped out one by one, but it's, uh, it was not in a good way. It's like one minute you've got seven members and then the next minute you're just down to Ripley. It's, to me, it's an overrated movie. I mean, it was okay, but I, I could never consider this a classic. I would never say this is one of the best movies of all time. Um, definitely not that good. And I would say I'm going to have to rate Aliens or Alien, the director's cut, a 7 out of 10. And I think I'm being a wee bit generous. I get it was 1979, there's not as much you could do, but really, all the interact, all the scenes were with the Alien were like jump scares. There was no real like fight scenes or action scenes. It was just like, the, oh, the Alien sees you and it kills you. And then even at the end, I mean, all Ripley does is open a door to send Alien into space, so... I guess maybe in future movies <laughs> they're a bit more creative and they have guns and they try and fight the alien and you might get more action scenes and stuff like that. But it's not. I'm not even necessarily an action person. Even just the the characters, I wasn't a big fan of. I didn't really like the android. I thought it was a bit annoying. Um, I did not like on obviously that Lambert did not like her. Uh, the one of the engineers, Brett, didn't really do anything. I'm not a big fan of Ripley either. Favourite character was probably Dallas and uh, the engineer Parker, but Dallas dies relatively early as well. So, yeah, I mean, not a massive fan of Alien. I mean, it was a decent movie, but I can't really say it was much more than that, and I'm giving it a 7 out of 10, guys. Let us know what you think down below, and what rating would you give this movie? And that'll be it then. Maybe stay tuned, and I might see an Aliens uh, movie review coming soon. But anyway, till next time, being on Scotland TV, peace.